So in 11 days, we went from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is good to go to, hey, this might be causing some blood clots. We need to pause and take a look at this to, yep, it was causing blood clots. Go ahead and take it anyway. That seems to me like it might be causing a lot of questions from some of you. It certainly caused some questions from me. So let's go through and talk about it a little bit. I'll start with all the normal disclaimers. I'm not your doctor. I'm just talking about the data that we have so far. And we're gonna kind of go through the numbers that the CDC said that they used, that the FDA said they used to make the decision to start recommending to use the Johnson & Johnson vaccine again. So as we start reviewing the data, we see that women 18 to 49 have a dramatically different risk of getting these blood clots that have an association with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine than everybody else. But the ACIP committee, who's the one who advised the CDC and the FDA, uh, they just came out with a recommendation saying, let's go ahead and start giving this vaccine to everyone over 18 again. There's some questions there, right? Because there's this higher risk of blood clots for one particular group, but everyone should start being able to get it again. Um, I think that maybe some of the question comes from the warning statement that they added into the patient information sheet for Johnson & Johnson. And if you look at the patient information warning that is now added to the information sheets, you'll see that it does say that most of these reports were from people who were 18 to 49 reporting these blood clots and that the chance of this occurring is remote. Now I'm gonna have to agree that the chance recurring is remote. I think maybe the issue that I have with this is maybe we're not being as clear as we could be for each person as to what their risk of getting a blood clot from this vaccine is compared to their risk from not being vaccinated for COVID. And I think that's a thing that we need to look at. So let's look into that. So here you're gonna see 15 reported cases out of almost 7.8 million doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine were given out. And when you look at that, that's two cases out of a million. Two cases out of a million sounds like pretty great numbers, right? And you look at that and you say, wow, you balance that against my risk of having a bad issue from COVID. And maybe this makes a lot of good sense for me. But if you look down at the bottom of the slide, the very same slide in that presentation that they made some decisions based off of, one of the things you're gonna see is that the risk is not the same depending on who you are. If you are an older male, your risk is dramatically different than if you happen to be a younger female. So let's kind of look at the risk of not getting vaccinated with the Johnson Johnson vaccine versus the risk of getting this blood clot if you do. Let's start with older men. And if you look at older men, they basically said that if they gave out a million doses of this to men over 50, that they don't think any of them would get this blood clot. That is wonderful. That means this still works for them. And they think that they would manage to keep 708 of them from dying of COVID, which I think is great numbers. So if you're a male over 50, this math makes pretty great sense. They looked at males 18 to 49, um, as you get younger, your risk from COVID decreases and changes. So they figured if they give a million doses, they would manage to stop 11 deaths from COVID out of males 18 to 49, if a million of them got that. But two of them might get this blood clot. So the math gets a little closer there. You might cause two blood clots, but you'd manage to keep 11 people from dying of COVID. Again, positive numbers, but a lot closer than if you look at the older men. So let's talk about how the risk comes out to women, right? So if we start with older women, women over 50, uh, if they gave out a million doses to women over 50, you're looking at two cases of blood clots versus saving almost 600 people from dying of COVID. Again, that's pretty great math. But here's the problem. Um, there are a lot of people who are 18 to 49 year old women in this country and we just, the CDC, just put out recommendations that says everyone over 18 should be offered this vaccine again. But I'm gonna put on the screen, let's just put on the risk to women 18 to 49. Now look at that, that's 13 cases of this blood clot they believe that they were gonna cause if they give a million doses to women 18 to 49, but they would prevent 12 deaths. Now, it should be noted that not every case of blood clot results in death. That is not a thing. So this is not apples to apples here. This is apples to oranges. But you literally have, by the CDC's numbers, if you're 18 to 49 year old woman, you have a higher risk of getting a blood clot from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine than you do of having your life saved by that Johnson & Johnson vaccine due to COVID. And I think that that is a significant statistic from their own page, from their own information, 
that I don't think is necessarily accurately reflected to the degree that it is, that it is important in the warning statement on the patient thing. So look at this, look at that number, and now look at the warning statement that is put out by the FDA. And just ask yourself if you think that that really tells the full story. And I don't know that it does. And so I think that I personally have some problems with this. So my concern with the completeness of the patient warning that's been added is that I don't know that it accurately reflects to the average person the difference in their risk if they are a female 18 to 49. And informed consent is an important thing. So let's take a look at a quote that CNN put out from Dr. Sarah Long, who was a member of the ACIP committee. And this is what she said. This is an age group, speaking about women 18 to 49, that is most at risk in terms of the blood clots from the Johnson Johnson vaccine, that is getting this vaccine predominantly to save other people's lives and mortality, not their own. Uh, the risk to women 18 to 49 dying of COVID is pretty low in relation to the general population. A lot of these people are getting these vaccines to protect their loved ones, their communities, and those around them. And here's the, the important part that I think that she really brought out. Dr. Sarah Long said this, and I think that we have a responsibility to be certain that they know this and that if they choose to be vaccinated with this anyhow, that we want to respect that choice. So let's just bring that all home. I can't tell you where the line for risk versus benefit makes sense for you. Whether you wanna get the Johnson Johnson vaccine, whether you wanna pursue getting the Pfizer Moderna, whether you want to not get it all together, that is a thing that you have to make up for yourself. And the important thing is you deserve to have the information that gives you the ability to make that informed choice. As an adult woman in America, you have rights and you should be able to make these choices, but I think that if we're only telling women that, hey, most of these cases were in 18 to 49, um, and we're not actually describing the true risk of this versus the risk of something happening from COVID, then I think that we're doing them a disservice and I think they deserve better. And I hope that in the future, we are able, whether on a physician level, individually in your office or from the actual federal government, give a better informed consent for women so that they know their risks when they decide if and which vaccine they want to choose. If you've got any questions, leave them below. I'll do the best I can to try and answer or find the resources for you so that you can discuss this over with your physician and figure out if this makes sense for your personal situation. Try and be safe out there, y'all.